so long time no see. I haven't seen him on the inside of a car for a long time. Um, kind of been dealing with a bit of content burnout and what to talk about, uh, which is bound to happen inevitably. And I've also been focusing on a lot of other things, um, other hobbies, just playing guitar, doing a bit of martial arts and still keeping up with the gym and work while I'm off for uni for summer. And I thought today I'd talk about one of my most viewed topics, which is um, foster care. And I've already talked about it on a in a good light, which was the benefits to foster care video that I did, which performed quite well and grew most of my channel. But um, I thought today I'd just talk about like the kind of like the worst parts of foster care. Um, so for people who are new around here uh, or haven't seen my foster care video, I was put into foster care at the age of seven. Um, and I've been in five different foster homes, um, all a varying amount of time. So the first three foster homes were one year respectively each. And then I was in a, a longer term foster home with my actual family for five years. And then I moved um, back to my hometown for another two years with a, a stranger family. And yeah, starting, starting from the beginning in what I, I didn't like, was just how isolated things were um, because you're being moved around so much and especially because I wasn't in one constant foster home because typically foster care it's not like adoption foster care is usually you're not going to be with the same family for say I don't know 10 plus years you might probably get moved around you might be with a family for three years then another family for eight years and another two years or something like that because obviously I think foster care is a more like a short-term solution um, for different stages of your life. Adoption's more like when you actually want to treat them like your own kid. I mean, foster care, obviously they want to treat you like their own kid, but um, it's sometimes harder because foster care is usually for kids who are, are a bit older, say like, um, well, I went into foster care at the age of seven, um, but when you're thinking of adoption, most kids go into adoption very young, say like, probably like before or even five years old so it's a lot easier for the the adopt the adopters to get to know the child more and treat them like their actual kid um, so yeah being moved around so much it kind of gets a bit isolating especially because i didn't have my first phone until 16 um, when i was trying to make friends it just felt a bit um a bit hard to do so because first of all i didn't live close to any of the schools that i was going to um, mostly because foster care is like a really demanding role at the moment and it was when I was younger there's not a lot of foster carers around um, so that meant finding one close to the schools that I wanted to go to well that I was going to without so that's the thing I, I, I was very sentimental about the school that I wanted to go to um, I wanted to stay in the school I didn't want to move schools when I had to move foster homes so they had to try and find a foster carer that was willing to drive me um, a far a far way to keep me in the same school instead of changing schools which I appreciate they did for me in the end because I think if I moved schools I would have had it a lot lot harder um, so yeah I was very isolated because I'd lived really far away from the schools that I went to um, obviously I had no form of communication the only communication I'd had with my friends was actually in school at the playground or in between lessons so that's kind of made that kind of made me like a class clown because like i just try and impress my friends whenever i could in person because there's no way i can talk to them outside of outside of the class i didn't have my phone i didn't have social media anything like that i didn't have internet access so yeah i just kind of had to be like the funny kid in class and uh try and make everyone laugh and make everyone know me more um, so yeah, that's the first part. It's very, very isolating. Um, most of the time was spent in my room, and um, I did go out and make friends um, outside of school, um, so like kids in the neighbourhood and such. But it never was quite the same because they were usually a lot younger than me, maybe like two or three years younger. And like when I was in like high school, maybe like year seven or year eight, between the ages of like twelve to thirteen when I was making friends with these guys, like they would be like 10 or 11 and this is kind of a bit of a difference in um, interests and like we were just a bit, I was just a bit more grown up. So I couldn't really like, I don't know, develop 
socially as good as my other peers because they were hanging around kids usually their own age so they could um, I don't know get get like get on interests easier and um, I don't know just have a bit more social maturity and do more interesting things like stay out later and that so yeah first point very very isolating um, now the second point is that everything everything is very very monitored um, when you're in foster care um, I was obviously since there was no internet access until I was probably about 13 um, there wasn't a lot of monitoring going on like by monitoring I mean there wasn't a lot of privacy um, my room didn't have a lock um, stuff like that um, like I just didn't feel very secure or private at all I felt like everyone was always watching me um, and also when I got an internet uh, when I got internet access that got worse because there was like internet trackers on everything I did um, obviously like I wasn't like a rebellious kid or I wasn't like searching up weird stuff but still like having like everything you do monitored online was a bit strange um, and my internet access was also limited so um, like I couldn't like access social medias or stuff when I did have internet access I could, I could watch YouTube and download games and play games online but I wasn't allowed to have social media or anything like that until I was probably about 16 so that obviously ties into the isolation part of things um, yeah, I, I just feel like um, everything I did was very heavily monitored. Um, I didn't like get time to myself. I did get time to myself, but I was kind of just like shut in my room because I felt like that's the only privacy I had. And I think my microphone just fell off there. So uh, I think the rest of this video is probably going to be worse audio audio quality since I just fell out. But um, yeah, it was just really. Friends fell out. I'm gonna record the rest of it on the way back because I don't want the audio to suffer. I don't know why it's fell out, but I'll continue this video later. Apologies about that. I don't know why my microphone fell out. Hopefully, this doesn't happen again. But um, now for the second reason, I'll go on to the third reason why I didn't quite like foster care. I mean, I don't hate it as much as some kids coming out of the foster care system because I've done quite well for myself. So. I have to kind of attribute some of that success down to how rigid the foster care system was but one of the things that I didn't really necessarily like was um, how often I actually got to see my actual family. So um, my visits to my actual family, so I, I was in foster care 24 7 so this means like I'm obviously living and sleeping in a, a stranger's house basically that isn't my mum and dad's. And obviously my mum and dad being divorced meant I saw them separately instead of sort of seeing them together. So I had, and obviously I'd see the rest of my family all in one. So basically what would happen is that I'd see my dad separately by himself. I would then see my mum and my mum and my grandma after. And then after that I'd see my grandma and granddad, aunts and uncles on my dad's side. So there's three separate visits and these visit days where I'd see them all at once would typically happen on a, happen I'd say at once every two months I think they were. So I'd see them for two hours each I think with my grandma and granddad it would be four hours because it was such a big family. Um, so I'd see probably like about 10, 10 of my family on my dad's side. Um, so yeah, the bit, with, with my mum and my dad, they were two hours each separately. And um, my grandma and my granddad and all the family on that side would be four hours. So in total, I'd be seeing, this is sounds really depressing, but in total, I'd be seeing my dad in the flesh for 12 hours a year, which is pretty crazy. And it's, it was the same with my mum. I'd see my mum in the flesh for 12 hours a year. Um, obviously, six, six two-hour sessions. And with my my dad's side of the family, I'd see them for 24 hours a year. And that was that was really hard. Obviously, I think I don't think it was because of how far away they were. Because obviously, for the majority of my foster care, I was actually living in Leicester. So seeing my, all my family in Wigan was about a two hour journey in the car. So obviously I think that was the reason for the limited amount of contact, but it's not because my 
family didn't want me to see my, my it's not because my aunt and uncle living in Leicester who were fostering me didn't want me to see my family more it was just because of how strict the regulations were of, I think how often I could actually see my family um, so yeah, that, that's something I didn't really like how restricted I could actually see them and I feel like the majority of my foster care foster care visits there'd always have to be a supervisor um, whenever I'd be with my mum or my dad not not with my grandma and granddad's side of the family but whenever I'd see my mum or my dad separately I'd have to um, be under supervision either that would be another family member such as my grandma with my mum or if it was my dad who was who I'd just see by himself it'd usually be a, a care worker um, so sometimes that wasn't the best because it kind of just felt like I was being watched and like I was being judged and my dad was being judged for what we were talking about and stuff like that and I didn't feel like I'd actually be comfortable in that environment because it'd just be someone watching over you and even though like obviously nothing bad happened like they just have to be there for some reason um, I guess that's just the policy of the foster care system in the UK um, so yeah that, that's point three I didn't I didn't really like that um, and I guess I'd say I'm not sure whether this is necessarily foster care as a whole or whether it was me or the houses that I was put into but I don't feel like they pushed me enough to actually be a better man or be have some sort of role model in my life they kind of just this is point four by the way they kind of just let me like do whatever I want they didn't really test me or involve me in anything if I don't want to it was kind of just like um you have to you have to come with us and do what what we ask you whenever we want um but apart from that you can just stay in your room and do whatever and that's kind of what i did and there was no like pressure to do anything productive like like if if i had a day off and i didn't want to do anything like they just let me sit in my room all day and like play play on my ds or play on my xbox and I think that kind of definitely de affected my development because I, I wasn't actually doing anything um, productive and that kind of made me very lazy, boring, a bit soft, I guess. It didn't really make me into much of a man. Um, obviously, like, with an actual role, like a, a father figure or like a role model in your life, if you had one, you usually get tested and you get shown new things and you kind of have to get dragged out and do things and um, that didn't really happen when I was in foster care I was just kind of like left to my own devices so I kind of had to build discipline um, go out of my comfort zone and try new things myself without, without having to um, have any like external support or an extra like push in the back as say um, so that's, that's kind of another reason um, and it kind of meant I wasn't very adventurous. I'd just do what was comfortable, uh, which was basically just sitting in my room playing games all day, um, which is pretty, definitely in a pretty bad position. Um, and yeah, it, it meant that like when I turned 16, like my foster carers weren't really too bothered about me getting a job because obviously like they just provided for me like financially with food and stuff and if I wanted something like out my own money like a game or something like that um, they they just give me pocket money for it uh, if I did chores around the house such as like washing up or I don't know walking the dog or putting the bins out something like that um, so yeah that, that that's number four and if I had to say number five it'd probably be um how un untrustworthy the foster care system tr treats you as like they treat you as someone who's like very untrustworthy basically um so basically i wasn't allowed to stay stay in the house by myself even probably up until about 17 years old i'd say um and i know that's not too bad like most kids probably aren't allowed to stay in the house by themselves until they're like 15 or 16 but it's kind of like how how much i was dragged everywhere like i was dragged shopping i was dragged pretty much everywhere and that kind of annoyed me because i was seeing kids my age like staying at home well i was hearing i wasn't necessarily seeing but there was kids in my school who were allowed to stay home have friends around they were allowed to go out shopping they were allowed to 
stay out late and I wasn't trusted with that so when I got older I was kind of like am I allowed to do this like this feels so foreign to me like being a bit rebellious or doing something that necessarily isn't what I've naturally been allowed to do it's like when I started like going out late for the first time in a while it just kind of felt weird to me because I never had that experience before I never really been taught that and I think it's just um, I think I think a lot of it's down to like the foster care system treating you as a reflection of your parents which is actually quite sad like obviously if, you, if someone takes you into foster care it's because your parents usually aren't in a fit state to look after you and they kind of just view you as I'd say as someone who is a reflection of the parents like someone who can't cope or isn't trustworthy to do certain things which is quite sad um, but when, when I started getting a bit more naturally trustworthy maybe say when I was about 16 or 17 and I was allowed to actually stay, back, stay at home by myself and do things myself that's when I actually grew which was crazy because once people actually started to treat me like an adult and allowed me to push myself out of my comfort zone even though they weren't the ones nudging me in the back to do so I'd, I'd, I'd be making the most progress so in a way the foster care system was, was actually really holding me back in a sense and yeah that's kind of like the five things I have to kind of say about foster care um, like I said it's not all bad there are good parts about it um, which I discussed in another video that I'll probably link in the, in the video in this video in the video this video I can't speak I'll link it in this video but um, yeah that's kind of all I have to really say about foster care I don't want to like milk the topic of foster care too much because there's not much to talk about now I've, I've discussed like what my experience was the good things about it and, and now the bad things about it so I think the next video I'm going to do is probably like a, a long form guide of such similar to the uh, the building the body one which I quite enjoyed doing that recording in different locations and like recording my workouts I really enjoyed that but um, yeah I'm going to try and do less content but more quality in future um, I think that's kind of my sort of gist I like working on bigger projects so yeah, um, thank you for watching and stay curious.